YouTube, team keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. We have talked and talked and talked about this for a very long time. Um, this was not my expectation that this would be going down because I just felt like this year, moving forward in 2022, the, the next season, it was such a prove it year for so many people, but especially for John Harbaugh, especially for John Harbaugh. He was in the last year of his deal, Lamar Jackson in the last year of his deal, and this was big. They, they just got rid of Wink Martindale, so it's like, all right, Wink, you were part of the problem, so we got rid of you. But with this report that Jameson Hensley just put out, that the Ravens are nearing a contract extension with John Harbaugh, I'm not a big fan of this move, and I'm going to tell you why. I feel like... This move, it alleviates so much pressure off of John Harbaugh. And it lets it gives John Harbaugh a pass. And again, I thought everybody was getting passes after last year with all the injuries and whatnot. But at the same time, if you're not going to give Wink a pass, and I know Wink is not the head coach. I get that. He's not the head coach. But if you're not giving Wink a pass... But you're giving Greg Roman a pass and you're giving Harbaugh a pass like Wink. This this really makes Wink look like a scapegoat to me. Um, and we know that Wink did have his issues. He had his deficiencies when it came to the Ravens defense. But if he didn't get a pass, why should everybody else? Because everybody else contributed to what this season was. And we know that injuries contributed for sure as well. But so did coaching. It sure did. So with this move, I just, and I know Ravens, they do not like, they hate it. They hate it when their coaches are on lame duck contracts. And apparently, again, with, with the video that we talked about it yesterday, um, with, uh, with Wink, it was said that since they didn't re-sign him to a deal, they didn't give him an extension. It was like, all right, you... We're not going to do a lame duck contract. And apparently Wink didn't like that. Harbaugh didn't like that. And they decided, you know what? It's time to move on. That's, that's what the report said. Um, so they moved on. But um, what about Greg Roman? What about with him? What's going to happen with him? And now with Harbaugh. And now a, an extension doesn't necessarily. It's not the end all be all when it comes to somebody being safe. But. You figure, like, if they getting ready to give him a contract extension, he ain't going nowhere. I was just really hoping, and, and y'all know, I, I talked about this before with John Harbaugh. He doesn't have to be fired, but the Ravens should still light a fire, keep that fire under him lit so he does not be complacent, so he does not remain complacent. This extension... This is complacency. This allows John Harbaugh to be like, ha, <laughs> I did it. I did it. Hey, I, I, I got it again. Let's go, baby. I got it. Oh, I'm good, y'all boy. I'm straight now. I'm good. I ain't got to worry about nothing. Shout out to French Montana. But with John Harbaugh, this, this just allows him to sort of be like, ah, okay. Ain't no pressure. I got my job. I got, I'm about to get my contract. To say, I'm, I'm straight. I don't know about y'all, but I'm straight. And it always takes me back to my guy, Brodney's comment on John Harbaugh about one of his best attributes being self-preservation. And he knows, like, hey, when stuff is on the line, his back's against the wall, he'll be like, all right, if EDC and them, they make the call, hey, Hobbs, hey, it's either you or it's them. You, you let us know. Oh, uh, Wink, hey, what's up, big fella? Hey, yeah, everything was straight. Everything was good, but yeah, we in the Bahamas right now. We was having a couple of Mai Tais. We were drinking a couple of margaritas and whatnot. We're chilling. I'm, I'm chilling with EDC and Bashadi and them, and, and everything's good, but um, I, uh, uh, we got to go on separate ways because I got to look out for me. I got to take care of me. We cool. Hey, I appreciate everything you did. Thank you. It's been a fun 10 years, but I'm trying to stay long, big dog. <laughs> you you got to go. But anyway, 
Um, and then uh, there was a report, I think, from Jeff Zrebit, where he said that uh, Wink and Harbaugh, they, they will butt heads a lot. And I could see that. Because you see, the way, the way Wink speaks, you could tell, like, that man, like, and I told y'all before, like, Wink is the type of person, he will tell you straight up, look, I'm getting ready to punch you in the face. I'm getting ready to punch you in the face. You're probably going to fall down. And the best case scenario for you, if you don't fall down, you'll certainly stumble and you'll, you'll be concussed. Uh, you'll probably get knocked out. And that's just what it's going to be. That's what I'm getting ready to do to you. That's the type of person Wink is. He will tell you straight up with that straight face. He'll do a little smirk here and there, but he won't be laughing. He won't be giggly about it. He will be straightforward. And Hobbs, <laughs> they, I, I could really see those two clashing for real. So when that report came out, I was like, oh, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. But to me, this, uh, this, this, this contract extension, it, it, it really doesn't. But let's read. Let's let's read the report from Jamison Hensley. He said uh, the Baltimore Ravens are nearing a contract extension with John Harbaugh, source said Tuesday. Team officials are currently in talks with Harbaugh's agent and an extension should get completed in a few weeks. The source said Harbaugh, 59, is entering the final year of a four year deal that he signed in January 2019. He has led the Ravens to a playoff berth in nine of his 14 seasons and guided his franchise to his second Super Bowl title in 2012. His career record, including playoffs, is 148 and 96. Uh, ranks as the sixth best winning percentage among active coaches with at least 90 games. In 2019, Harbaugh became the first Ravens coach to win Associated Press's NFL Coach of the Year award. I just, again, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of this at all. Um, now with Harbaugh, since he's going to be around for a while, um, the philosophy philosophies have got to change they have got to change now, now i can just i, I can hope I, I can hope expectations are they, they they become a little bit lower i'm being straight up well i'm always straight up with y'all but my expectations for the change in philosophy have become a little bit lower since the fire has been turned off the pressure has been turned off it's off it's off because you're 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 letting us know like okay hey Hall, again, no pressures on Harbaugh anymore. None. None. He's about to get a raise. He's about to get an extension. He's about to get some nice money. Some nice guarantees as well. But there's no more pressure. It's none. And that has let us know too. Like, hey, Harbaugh, we tied in with you. We rocking with you. So what is it going to be for Lamar? What's it going to be for Lamar Jackson? Philosophies have to change. People have to adjust and be more accountable. Accountable, excuse me. Harbaugh, he has to change his way, his methods of leadership. He has to change his ways of coaching. Harbaugh is a great leader, great leader of men. He's a people coach. We love that. But Harbaugh, now if you're gonna be here, okay, cool, whatever. He has to step in now. All that, all right, I'm, I'm going to let my offense, all that non-micromanaging, no, 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 no. We need you to micromanage now. We, you have to because the non-micromanaging, not stepping in, that has got to change. You can't, uh, him just letting his offensive coordinator be his offensive coordinator and do his thing. Okay, it, you know what, and if, and if you're not going to change that, you have to get an offensive coordinator who is going to be accountable for making changes. As far as defense, same thing. You have to get somebody who's not going to be stubborn on both sides of the ball, and you yourself have to be the same way. Harbaugh, he needs to either step in or get some guys that's going to hold themselves accountable. And I think it should honestly be a good mix of both. Because we've seen, like, that Super Bowl, it was great. Oh, we loved it. That was nine years ago. That was nine years ago. So obviously something has not been working. Some, the, the recipe for Raven's success has not been working. The 49ers, you look at them. They were in that Super Bowl. And they've obviously been through a couple of different quarterbacks, different coaches. But then they found something. They got to the Super Bowl and they were in the lead. And of course, you know, Patrick Mahomes and them, they, they did their thing. 49ers lost, so it's like, oh, okay. We, we made a Super Bowl, but we lost. Then they had a year when um, 
they a lot of people got hurt. So it was it was kind of a wash. But then now they're one game away from being back in the Super Bowl. But my point is they made the Super Bowl back then. They went through some changes because they saw some stuff wasn't working. Then they made the Super Bowl a couple years ago. And now they they are one game away from making the Super Bowl again. One, one game away. One game away. So they, they saw something that just wasn't working and they fixed it. And they've had a lot of success. You see Bing, Bengals. Bing, Joe Burrow has been there for two minutes. And they are one game away from the Super Bowl. Literally one game away. I talked about this before that with the Bengals, literally nothing that they do for the rest of this year can be considered a failure. If they lose the AFC Championship game, it's not considered a failure because who expected them to be here? Who expected the Bengals to be here? Again, he, he, Joe Burrow been there for two minutes. The Rams, they, they were just in the Super Bowl a couple years back with a whole other quarterback. They, uh, they shouldn't have been there. They should have only been to the NFC Championship because you know that whole pass interference thing. But still, they're there. They were just there a couple years back. And now they, they are one game away from being there again. And the Chiefs. <laughs> I ain't even got to say nothing about the Chiefs. Y'all already know what time it is with them. It's like the, the, the Super Bowl has just become their home now. But they, again, four straight AFC championships. Four straight. And they've been in, what, the last two Super Bowls? So, something... And of course the Bills, they they've been doing their thing too. And that, oof, that was just painful for them. But some my, my point in all that, when I say all that, is that something has got to give. But I, I do not feel like Raven should should be giving him an extension right now. It, say for instance, if Ravens, if it was during the season, like they did in 2018. If it was because because remember during that season. That report came out. Oh, the Ravens and Harbaugh, they're about to mutually part ways. And again, they're like, hey, no, we, we, we're not going to fire you. We're not going to put it as you got fired. We're going to say mutually parted ways. All right, cool. It doesn't look bad on you. You know you'll get a job fast. Cool. But that, guess what happened? That pressure, the pressure was on Harbaugh. The pressure was on Harbaugh. It was, and look what happened. Look what happened. Look what happened when the pressure was on this man last year of his deal back against the wall. Look what happened. But now complacency. Ain't no more pressure no more. You about to give this man a deal. I just I don't I don't like that. But that it, it is what it is. This is exactly what it is. So now my, again, my hopes is that with John Harbaugh that he step it up. He step it up and, and, and a lot gets changed. A lot gets changed with his methods, his ways, his coaching style, his hires, his philosophy, his attitude, his adjustments, his accountability. A lot needs to be changed if this team is going to have any real significant success. Regular season, like always, if the Ravens are healthy, <laughs> I'm not worried about regular season, even though in regular season, that's when you start to see patterns. Regular season, that, that, that's when you start to see stuff. That's when you start to be let known like, all right, this is how this coach is in this situation. Oh, this is how this coach is in this situation. But it's playoffs when stuff matters the most. And not everything is on the coaches. Players got to play, too. They got to do their thing as well. But everything starts with the top. Everything starts up top. Everything does. And in the, the, the situational football, in the most critical, crucial moments of every single game, and especially in the playoffs, because that's when, that's when the best coaching comes out. <laughs> that's when it really does, man. Really does. And as we have seen in these playoffs, it's all about offense, baby. Yeah, we know the whole Green Bay, San Francisco 49ers game, blah, blah. It's about offense. It's about offense. 
If you can't score points, you out of there. You out of there. And again, I know people like to point, oh, Ravens, but Ravens, even look at this year, they had a, a top 10 ranked offense. Their offense, oh, they got all these yards, da da da. Scoring offense was 17th. 17th. Bottom half of the league. 17th. That's not going to cut it. It's not. We know people were hurt. Ravens still had plenty of opportunities. Again, another reminder why I'm not a fan of this move. The six games straight, like six, six games, you lost six games in a row. I don't know if Ravens have ever done that before, but six games in a row. It, you, if you could have just won one of those games, even two, you, you're in the playoffs. But six games in a row. This is the reason why there were so many people who did not want the Ravens to make the playoffs because they were like, if Ravens make the playoffs, then so much stuff is going to get masked. So much stuff is going to get covered up because we know winning covers everything. Winning covers literally everything. Somebody's hurt. You lost a player. Oh, we won. So we still good. A bad decision is made. A bad interception. A bad coaching decision. Oh, we won. Everything's straight. Winning covers up everything. And we know winning, that's the end all be all in life in the NFL. But still, stuff... We knew that if the Ravens made the playoffs, a lot of stuff would get covered up. And y'all know, I still wanted them to make the playoffs, but at the same time, when thinking about stuff like that, I was like, ooh. But I still wanted them to make the playoffs because I wanted them to have a little chance. But since they didn't make the playoffs, I was thinking, and a lot of people said, all right, uh-oh, significant change is about to come up. Significant change is about to happen. But if they would would have made the playoffs, then there would be – a lot of these changes that we would hope for, that we were thinking of, would not be possible. Because Ravens could be like, hey, despite all these people being hurt, we still made the playoffs, baby. How about that? But they didn't. So a lot of people's expectations on what the Ravens front office, what, what any potential moves that they would make, a lot of people's expectations were like, all right, whoa, ooh, we got some possibilities now. Now some things could possibly change now. And while so many people, everybody was focused on Greg Roman, Greg Roman, Greg Roman, the Ravens were like, oh, you know what? Y'all are y'all know the saying that everybody says, oh, when a, when a lot of people zig, the Ravens zag. <laughs> Greg Roman was the zig. Getting rid of him was a zig. But again, the Ravens zag. So they got rid of Wink. So hoping for the best. Hoping for the best. But anyway, like John Harbaugh won't be anytime soon when it comes to being a head coach of the Ravens. Um, well, I was getting ready to say I'm out, but, uh, just know, like, I, I'm still rocking with the team. I still hope for the best for the team. Cause I don't want anybody to get anything twisted just because I'm not a fan of this extension. Um, just cause I'm not a fan of this move does not mean I ain't rocking with the Ravens, but I just, I do not think that this puts them in the best position for success. Unless there's some drastic changes in, in, in personality and the way that things are run. But if there are no drastic changes, then what, what should I expect? What should we expect? What should y'all expect? So, yeah, that's that, man. I, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's that. So, anyway, um, again, hoping for the best. Really hoping for the best and hoping that they really, and it seems like, they seem to be going in a different direction as far as philosophy. They seem to be, especially with them requesting to interview somebody from the outside as a potential defensive coordinator. Um, and that's Cowboy secondary coach uh, uh, Joe Witt. That's, that's something, that would be something completely different for them. And he runs the 4-3 with the Cowboys. So that could be another possible philosophical change. We'll see. But if they are like contingent on keeping uh, Greg Roman and um, doing things the same way as and not even just with Greg Roman, but just doing the same things the same way. I don't even know, man. So anyway, love y'all. Appreciate y'all. We out. Ugh.